Hey folks, well today is the day that I start on Larry Dixon's uh, single seat car that he uses for match racing and that kind of thing. It's a top fuel car, but what I've got to do now is I've got to take this car off the jig so I can get his in there. Well, I just haven't had time yet to start this one, so, but the bad thing is I have everything set up, motor location, cage location, and I'm gonna have to take it off. I need to get this car right here on the jig so I can get this front end cut off and get a new one with some thicker tubing on it and some new updates uh, that have been implemented by NHRA. And we're changing from, you know, a built car that the way that we wanted it to this one here, I believe was done by Brad Hadman. So nothing really lines up when it comes to the jig. Matter of fact, even the height of the car itself is different. But I base everything off the front end on the spindle location. I know how high those spindles have to be in order for the front end to be at the right, right height. Now, a couple things are gonna dictate that. You know, the wing needs to be X amount off the ground, the front wing I'm talking about. And it's also, it's gotta be X location away from the spindles. When you're working with different manufacturers of cars and you're trying to, you know, put front ends on them and things like that, none of these things really have the same location. Now, it's close, but it's not the exact same. So a lot of the jig fixtures and stuff like that that I had made, well, they are not gonna work on this car. So, you know, being as I'm kind of a one-man band here and people show up every once in a while, I'll use them up when they do. Um, you know, I've got to get that old trusty Harbor Freight uh, cherry picker out to help me around a little bit. Now, the end goal here is to get the exact location of this front end, then when we cut this uh, chassis off right behind where the spindles are here, it's gonna maintain its own place. Now, I also need to be able to take this front end completely off the jig, put it back on, and make sure it's in the exact same location because when we remove this front end from the driver's area forward, we're going to have to put the tubing into the driver's cage and then slide this front section right here that you're looking at that holds the spindles and the front wing, that's gonna to have to slide onto the tubes back into its same location. That way we know that we have everything straight from the driver's area to the front end. So moving forward here to try and hold this front end, this jig fixture that I use for like the DSR cars and stuff like that, well, it's not gonna work on this one. You know, until somebody sees this done, they don't realize how much, you know, fixturing and things like that um, to hold these things in place when you're trying to, you know, get these things lined up perfectly. So this is how I hold the front spindles in place. And it's gonna have, of course, king pins in it. And then these control arms, actually this one has bolt-on control arms. Um, these control arms right here, they are be mounted on this whole front end piece and held in place. And that's gonna determine the rear height of that front end piece right there. These other pieces I've made are basically like a shock extension adjustment piece. Uh, it's also a muffler clamp and a chunk of chrome molly tubing cut in half. And that's how I hold down and I'm able to adjust that front end piece however I want. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust this whole thing with a straight string that goes all the way down from one end of the jig to the other. We'll measure um, each side of the cage, each side of the lower rails, and we'll have this thing perfectly positioned to where it has a center line. So as far as the update goes, is the current spec, you can have an 049 thick front end on this thing. The spacing of the bays is shorter with that, but NHRA is gonna mandate a 065 front end. So it's gonna gain quite a bit of strength the flexibility might change a little bit. A lot of guys are worried about that, but hey, I've got the most runs with an 058 car, and I ran that when everyone else is running 049, and that car hauled ass. So I got the old little plasma cutter out. I bought this thing off of Amazon, and they had some kind of prime deal, I don't know, a couple years ago or whatever. But I'm really surprised, it's 220, and the dang thing actually works pretty good. And I'm seriously, I, didn't, I couldn't have spent like 200 bucks on it, I don't think. So catch the next video once I get a little bit more progress done and uh, 
I'll show you how we chop a front end off one of these dang things. Thanks for watching, guys. Sure appreciate it.